Welcome back everyone to another episode of our language learning podcast. I'm Olivia, and I'm here with Bilal. In our last episode, we talked about how travel can enhance your language learning experience. Today, we're going to dive into something just as crucial, everyday conversations and practical scenarios. How are you doing, Bilal? Ready to get into some real-world language tips? Absolutely, Olivia. I'm excited to share some insights. It's one thing to learn vocabulary and grammar, but it's another to actually use that knowledge in everyday situations. That's where the real growth happens. Exactly. So today, we're going to break down how you can use everyday interactions to practice and improve your English fluency. Whether you're ordering food, making small talk, or even asking for directions, these are all opportunities to use your English in a practical way. Let's start with why everyday conversations are so important for language learners. What do you think, Bilal? Everyday conversations are the bread and butter of language learning. They're the interactions that happen naturally, without a script. When you engage in small talk or ask someone a question, you're forced to think on your feet. This not only helps reinforce what you've learned, but also exposes you to new vocabulary and phrases that you might not encounter in a textbook. Absolutely. And I think it's also about building confidence. When you successfully navigate a conversation, even if it's just a simple exchange at a coffee shop, it boosts your confidence. You start to realize that you can actually communicate in English, and that's a huge motivator to keep learning. Confidence is key. The more you practice, the more comfortable you become with the language. And the great thing about everyday conversations is that they're everywhere. Whether you're at the grocery store, on the bus, or just chatting with a neighbor, there are endless opportunities to practice. Let's move on to some practical scenarios. One of the most common situations is ordering food at a restaurant. What tips would you give to someone who's nervous about doing this in English? Start by familiarizing yourself with common phrases you might need. Things like, I'd like to order, can I have, or what do you recommend, are good to know. Also, don't be afraid to ask for clarification if you don't understand something. You can say, could you please repeat that? Or, what does this mean? It's better to ask than to guess and get something you don't want. That's great advice. Another scenario that trips people up is making small talk. Whether it's with a cashier or a colleague, small talk can be challenging because it's often unscripted and spontaneous. How do you handle that? Small talk can be intimidating, but it's a great way to practice English. Start with simple topics like the weather, sports, or something happening around you. You could say, it's a beautiful day today, or did you catch the game last night? These are safe, neutral topics that everyone can relate to. And if you're unsure how to keep the conversation going, ask open-ended questions. Instead of just saying, how are you, you can ask, what's been keeping you busy lately, or what do you think about? This encourages the other person to talk more, giving you more opportunities to listen and practice. Exactly. And remember, Small talk doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is to keep the conversation going. Even if you make mistakes, most people will appreciate your effort to communicate. And that's what really matters. Let's talk about learning from real-world interactions. I think one of the best ways to improve your English is by reflecting on the conversations you've had. What do you think, Bilal? I completely agree. After a conversation, take a moment to think about what went well and what you could improve. Did you struggle with any words or phrases? Was there something you didn't understand? Use that as a learning opportunity. Look up any unfamiliar words or ask someone for clarification. This way, you're constantly learning and improving. That's such a valuable practice. I also think it's helpful to keep a language journal. After you have a conversation in English, write down a summary of what you talked about. This helps reinforce the vocabulary and phrases you used, and it also gives you a chance to reflect on your progress. Language journals are great. They don't have to be formal. Just jotting down a few notes or key phrases can make a big difference. And over time, you'll be able to see how much you've improved, which is really motivating. Another tip is to listen to English in context. If you're watching a movie or a TV show, pay attention to how characters use language in different situations. Notice the phrases they use in everyday conversations and try to incorporate them into your own speech. Yes. And don't forget about listening to native speakers in real life. If you're in an English-speaking country, eavesdrop a little when you're in public places like cafes or on public transport. 
Notice how people greet each other, how they order food, and how they make small talk. It's a great way to pick up natural conversational English. Let's shift gears and talk about some challenging situations. We've all been there when you're in a conversation and you suddenly realize you don't know the word for something. What's your strategy for handling that? It happens to everyone. My go to strategy is to describe the word I don't know. For example, if I can't remember the word for fork, I might say, the thing you use to eat with, or the metal object with prongs. This way, the other person usually understands what I'm trying to say, and I've kept the conversation going. That's a great tip. It's all about being resourceful and not getting stuck. Another challenging situation is when someone speaks too quickly and you can't keep up. How do you deal with that? When someone speaks too fast, don't be afraid to ask them to slow down. You can say, Sorry, could you speak more slowly? Or, I didn't catch that. Could you repeat it? People are usually happy to slow down if they know you're trying to learn the language. And remember, it's okay to miss something. Focus on the key points and don't worry about understanding every single word. Exactly. And if you still don't understand, it's perfectly fine to ask for clarification. Say something like, could you explain that in a different way? Or, I'm not sure what you mean, can you give me an example? It shows that you're engaged and willing to learn, which is always a positive thing. Let's wrap up with some advice on building a routine for fluency. Consistency is key when it comes to language learning. What does your daily routine look like, Bilal? My routine is all about integrating English into my daily life. I start the day by listening to a podcast or watching a short video in English while having breakfast. Throughout the day, I make it a point to use English whenever I can. Whether it's reading an article, writing a journal entry, or even thinking in English. I also set aside some time in the evening to practice speaking, either with a language partner or by myself. That's a solid routine. I like to incorporate English into my hobbies. For example, if I'm cooking, I'll watch a cooking tutorial in English. If I'm exercising, I'll follow an English workout video. This way, I'm practicing without even realizing it. It's about finding ways to make English a natural part of your day. Incorporating English into your hobbies is a fantastic idea. It makes the learning process enjoyable and less of a chore. And speaking of enjoyment, don't forget to celebrate your progress. Language learning is a journey, and every small victory is worth celebrating. Absolutely. Whether it's successfully ordering a meal in English or having a conversation without any major hiccups, these are all signs of progress. And that progress will motivate you to keep going. So there you have it, practical, 